What's up, guys? This is Pedro from My Stuttering Life, where you will hear the good, the bad, the very ugly. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. But through it all, just know that you are not alone. So let's get started. This is episode number 69, and my special guest is Will McClurg. Will is 36 years old and a medical sonographer specializing in pediatrics. Currently, Will is involved in medical sales and clinical training. Will has been stuttering since the age of five and states that it was terribly hard growing up. He's had many doubts along the way about how his disability could hinder his success but continues to exceed his past expectations. Will is currently trying to find a way to help youth that stutter and feels that the biggest thing he needed growing up was for someone else to understand when no one really seemed to know how to help. I am honored to have him as a guest with me on the My Stuttering Life podcast. Welcome, Will McClurg. Yeah, Pedro, thanks so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Thank you, sir. This is an honor. So we have a lot of topics to cover, so let's get started. Sounds good. Do you remember when you first began to stutter? Uh, yes, I do. Um, it's probably is right around the age of uh, five or uh, six. Is around that time uh, my parents were going through a uh, divorce. So something tells me the added uh, stress of that kind of triggered the onset of it. But I don't I necessarily know that for sure. Does it run in the in your family? Are there any other fam family members who stutter? Uh, yes. Uh, my uh, grandfather, my dad, and one of my cousins, uh, that, they all do or did uh, very mildly. Um, like not uh, near to the degree that like I did uh, growing up or like even now. Um, so there was a little bit of family history, but I seem to be the one that uh, got the more severe case. During your school years, did you ever have speech therapy? And if you did, was it helpful? Yes. Um, well, well, like I tried it. Um, like my mother would uh, shoot, like have me try all kinds of different things. Um, nothing really worked. It was almost at the time I kind of like almost thought of myself as more of an expert on this than the uh, therapist that I was speaking to. So it was really <laughs> hard to kind of listen to them right? or try to yeah. take their guidance because I just like saw it on their face. They had no idea what was going on and the techniques and things that they were trying me or like having me try. I just, I don't know. It just wasn't ever really uh, beneficial. I tried like all types of different things like uh, therapy or speech therapy or even like hypnotherapy and like even that, I was just like, this is crazy. You know, this isn't the answer. <laughs> not going to work. So not uh, very helpful, not at all. So going back to um, your school life, y you know, high school is extremely st stressful and, and whatnot. Yeah, you, know, yeah. you, you have the hormones and then you have peer pressure and everything. But if you add on there, stuttering it just makes it a little bit more difficult how did you handle st st stuttering in high school uh, i didn't i i avoided it i would uh skip class um i would skip work if anything involved me like speaking in front of the class or giving any type of presentation i would either just not show up just not do it like fail the i feel like the assignment um there was uh, some points when the school was kind of like working with me, like my mom kind of like uh, figured out what was going on. And we had uh, tried to work out a thing with the teachers to sort of excuse me uh, from certain things or like allow me to do uh, private presentations with them, uh, things like that. Uh, some teachers are really, really accommodating and, and others would just almost downright ignore it um, and almost kind of put me on the spot like even more because of it, I think. Um, so yeah, I would say like really from maybe fourth or fifth grade on, I really struggled with certain things in school. We have the same similar background because I skipped a lot of classes 
Um, well, okay, let me b- b- backtrack. And so you you know on the first day of school, you have to st- stand up and give your name, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, yeah. Did that one time. I did that one time, and it was it was just nothing was coming out. It was just horrible. And so, yeah, that's when I told myself, this ain't never going to happen again. <laughs> so. yeah. yeah, I totally get you. I, I still deal with that with like new jobs or things like that. I like right. orientation. It's okay. like we're like adults now, and we're still doing this like elementary school stand up and introduce yourself. And everybody hates it, and it doesn't really benefit anybody. Like, I'm really not sure why we're still doing it, uh, but I still struggle with that, and I still will like avoid situations like that, or have to contact, um, I guess, like who's in charge uh, prior, to sort of excuse myself from those types of things. Uh, sometimes I'm okay, and like, like I jump in, and I'm the first one up, and I do it, and it feels great. Uh, but I'd say 90% of the time. Uh, just like you said, I stand up, but uh, nothing comes out. I can't even uh, speak. I freeze, and it's it's just extremely embarrassing and frustrating. And yeah, it's horrible. See, and and you know, I'm after that first traumatic um, experience. I told myself, okay, you know, uh, this will never happen to Pedro again. And so after that, the first two days of school, all through school, I skipped, and then. It just carried on, you know, into um, um, under, um, undergraduate and then graduate s- school. I mean, I did the same thing because I know I, you know, I always had a hard time with it. And so, you know, how I handled it, because, you know, we're all different in, you know, in our journeys. And so I just skipped the first two days of my entire school career because i didn't want to go through all of yeah you know yeah. i mean yeah i've done it's rough. Thing multiple times yeah i totally understand yeah it's just rough um do you have any advice for parents and teachers with regards to children who stutter uh yeah definitely um wow i could write like a book i feel like at this point um I would definitely say don't uh, pressure uh, the kids. That's probably the worst thing you can do. I almost kind of think like the only way that I I ever found uh, my way out or my way to uh, cope is just through like added self confidence. Uh, so any type of like pressure uh, situation or any situation where like you're forced to stutter and it's apparent like like in front of a large group, it's just going to make it uh, ten times worse. And just like you're always kind of stuck in that uh, situation, that like fear, like the fear of failure, uh, that stuff is all just uh, shoot like repeated anytime like you go through that. Um, so it's hard to say, but I definitely be patient, uh, not try to push, not try to uh, practice or uh, get over the fear, like anything like that. It's not that type of situation. Um, you know, like I wish I had a solution or uh, the best way. To, like to help a kid, I think everyone's kind of different, and that's the hard part. See, and you bring up a a, a you know g- good point. Um, um, I believe that there has to be a team effort because when I was growing up, no one n- knew what the other person was doing, i.e., the school teacher, the speech therapist. And then my my parents, no one was on the same page. It's like everybody was fumbling through. And so, I mean, um, uh, uh, during all of my speech therapy, I've had some fantastic speech therapists. But like your previous statement, uh, there were times when um, I would um, educate them. Because, I mean, you know, hello, I've had it for all, all these years. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> you know? I understand. <laughs> I know what's going on, <laughs> and so yeah. let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally understand. Uh, that's, like, I definitely understand where you said, like, everyone was kind of on a different uh, page. 
I don't, I really think anybody like understands uh, stuttering, like what causes it, like how it can be helped. I think there's a lot of theories and practices, but I think it's all just like, uh, just that, uh, just a theory and just a practice. And I think outside of, of even like a speech therapist, it's people who really don't understand it like at all. And I think that's the problem is just the, the social like awareness and understanding. Uh, people don't understand. Like I've had people ask me if if I'm trying to speak. Uh, like typically my stutter now is like like I'll go to speak and nothing will come out. Like my mouth will open and kind of freeze, or my jaw will kind of like open and close, open and close. Like like I'm trying to like I'm trying to form that word. I've had people ask me, oh, like what's wrong with your jaw? Or oh wow, you know, like all types of different things. Like they just have no idea. Right, right. Um, I've I've had people ask me when I'm having a block. I mean, I mean, it is a block. My eyes are closed. My arms yeah, are just yeah. going all over the place. My leg <laughs> yeah. is tapping. My foot's tapping. And then they're asking me, should, should they call nine one one? Yeah, yeah. No, that's how I feel sometimes. Like when I have my blocks, it's like like my eyes close, my face kind of freezes. I'm still kind of like moving my hands. Like in the process of speech, right. like there's just uh, nothing going on. And then like I open my eyes after the words come out and the expression like on these individuals, actually, like their faces, is just kind of like what just happened. And it's like it's so embarrassing. It's not like you want to uh, stop. Like, like at the time, it's almost so like embarrassing. You're kind of uh, stuck in it and you kind of just want to uh, almost like power through just like to keep things going. Like, and maybe they didn't notice, maybe they don't really understand what's going on. And I can just kind of keep talking and this will kind of go away. And that's almost easier than kind of uh, pausing the conversation to sort of explain what just happened. Right. Because, you know, there was one time, I mean, there was just one time when, I mean, I was having a severe block and that's when I stopped breathing and then my eyes are closed. Yeah. And and then I got dizzy, and then I kind of passed out and fell onto the concrete, you know, floor. Oh, no. Um, that only happened one time, and that's it, one time. And now I will tell people, if you know what I'm trying to say, and, and you know, half the time it's wrong, but if yeah. you know what I'm trying to say, yeah. help you, help me, help you, help me, that way I don't, you know, have to be passed out again because that's not a good look for Pedro, you know, <laughs> to be all passed out on the concrete. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> I understand. Ooh, doggy. Okay. Now let's change gears a little bit job wise. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever experience discrimination because of your st stutter? Oh, all the time. Uh, not so much like anymore. Um, like I do remember one time uh, specifically, there was like an orientation class where it was kind of the uh, presenter was kind of like the lazy presenter and it was, Oh, I'm going to take a break and look, I'm just going to let you all read like each page. And then as soon as we're done, we'll kind of go over this. And I know that's not me, you know, so I just get up and uh, leave the room and kind of take a break, you know, for like however long, like I think that exercise is going to be going on. And then I return to the room and uh, the session is over. So I contacted the uh, boss, like my boss at the time and kind of explained what was going on. Like, Hey, you know, like, like I'm a stutter, that type of situation is not a like like a good situation for me. Um, didn't really know like who to contact at that time because the presenter wasn't somebody that I would be like answering to. Uh, so I just wanted to contact you and kind of explain why I left today. And their answer was uh, basically was yeah, sorry since you missed that. Um, basically, like you just don't get the job. Like just don't come back tomorrow. So that's the one thing that kind of sticks out in my head. Uh, but yeah, they people don't understand. They kind of see it as a like almost like a flaw, like a personality uh, flaw, or even like a performance uh, type of flaw uh, to where you're not able to perform the job, and it's uh, frustrating. You know, um, it's extremely fr frustrating because. You know, we have to work like 10 times harder than everybody else on just trying to get the words out, finish our our thoughts, our convers 
our conversations and many of the jobs growing up um, that 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 I might did previously, they were all data entry because that required yeah. <laughs> little human interaction, which was wonderful yeah. until until there was a PA announcement that one of the front staff people had to either go to lunch or go to the bathroom and and, th and they would ask for volunteers to help hand 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 to the phones and so every time i heard that pa i ran into the men's restroom <laughs> yep. i hid in i hid in a st a, st a stall for for a regular break was you know 15 minutes and then for lunches, it was 30 minutes. So, I mean, I was in there because I knew that if I hopped on that phone, it was either going to be A, the worst experience, and B, possible termination. And so, I mean, I, I, mean, I ran like the Dickens all the way to the restroom because I knew. I mean, I know what I can and cannot do and then at that time I knew that I could not handle the phones and so that's how that's how I coped with it. It's horrible too, isn't it? Like you basically go throughout your work day like timing your breaks. <laughs> like, you time everything like around that, <laughs> and then like the entire time, like you're just extremely stressed out because you don't know if you're going to be put into that situation all day and long. It's, it's just it's like a panic attack the entire time you're at work. It's yeah, it's horrible. Yeah, that's why when I got home, I was completely drained. I yeah. mean, mentally, psychologically, I had nothing. And so I would, yep. I would just plop on the couch and not want to talk to anybody. I wanted to sit yep. in the quiet. <laughs> I mean – because all day long, my organs in my entire body were tense because what if they had asked me a question or what if they told me to go handle the phones or what? I mean, I mean it is just constant. I mean, yeah. you <laughs> it's, it's exhausting. No, I totally understand. I still deal with stuff like that. I mean, it's just whew. now. Now, how did. How did you handle job interviews? Because there are certain things that you can hide in a job interview, and a stutter isn't yeah. one of them. Uh, how did you <laughs> How did you handle that? Uh, well, like over the years, I've actually learned a lot of different tricks to like hide my stutter, uh, with just like certain pauses or questions. Like, like I have quite the like like arsenal these days, um, but. I'd say like as I was younger, I would like I was just pretty silent. Uh, like my answers would be pretty brief. I wouldn't like it say too much. Like even now, the more I talk or the more I start to go on, that's when I'll start to have uh, like little speed bumps that I'll hit. Um, yeah. So growing up, I like I didn't really like apply for jobs until I was maybe like out of high school uh, because like of that fact, I would have to go through like an interview and basically talk to someone I wouldn't actually know. And up until then, I would just kind of find little jobs that I could, you know, like like a friend's mom would offer me a job or like the high school would offer me a job, like little things like that. Um, yeah, so it was just a pure like avoidance until I was older. Did you ever have a panel job interview? Because I've had, <laughs> you know, a couple of those and it was, I mean, most of the time, when the when the HR person would email me and and tell me that I made the first round and then they were going to schedule the panel job interview with three or more people and to just read that in an email I would yeah. respond and this hurt a lot I would respond that I had already ex accepted another position which i hadn't i mean i mean that was a big old lie um but yeah but th that's how i handled it because i knew i mean it's hard enough talking to one person but talking to three four or five people i mean 
during that time period of my life, I said, oh, no. So, I mean, I can't tell you how many amazing j jobs that I just passed up and and lied to the HR person because I knew that I couldn't do the panel. Yeah. Yep. I totally been there. Um, like I kind of like almost got over like the fear, um, not like totally, but in speaking to like smaller groups, I'd say maybe five or less people um, kind of got over that maybe in the last like four or five years. But up until that, yeah, I was just uh, pure like avoidance. Just like you said, uh, one time I actually showed up to, a group interview. Um, it's like right outside of like high school. Um, and like, I had no idea if it was a group interview. And like, at that time I was kind of weighing like, like, is it more embarrassing just to walk out before this actually starts or just to kind of see like how it goes? Oh, I've done that. And the, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like at that time I just kind of like saw how it went. And just like I said, like my answers were super, super brief. Um, but I did it. It was uh, great. Like I walked out of there thinking I was like uh, the greatest thing in the world because I was able to get through that. Uh, but then of course there, uh, she like reply at the end was, well, yeah, you know, like everybody liked you, but you didn't really seem too talkative. <laughs> right. And I was like, well, yeah, I totally understand. That's not me right now. Uh, but yeah, like, like I'd say now, like as long as it's like a sit down uh, type of thing and I feel very, very uh, confident, and my skill level, uh, then I don't find any uh, fear. Like there's still like the like anxiety, but I'm able to sort of talk myself through it now. Where like I've done this before, like I have this skill level, like I'll be totally fine. And it is super super stressful, uh, but I get through it. And as soon as I walk out, it's it's just like the biggest relief, right. biggest relief in the world. Now that I'm older, uh, a. a a little bit wiser, not too much, but just a little bit wiser. Now, yeah. what um, what helped me is w walking into a job interview, I disclosed. I walked in with the confidence of a lion. I walked in and just looked at everybody. Good morning. My name is Pedro Pena. I have a speech impediment, so I may get hung up on a word or two. If I get hung up, just give me four hours and the word will come out. <laughs> they would laugh you, r r right and then but that's all you have to say right it's like the initial stigma once that's kind of broken right that, that kind of calms you down and you're able to get through it oh it was wonderful that was yeah. my ice breaker my go-to ice breaker for every job interview and let me tell you i got every single job and so yeah. i mean that way they knew that during the job interview, d during our conversation, if my eyes close, if if I s start to tap, they know, oh, it's just him having a stutter block or whatnot. Yeah. And they were patient and and uh, and they were professional and they had integrity. And so, I mean, it was I mean, doing that f for me has proven 100 percent effective because everyone yeah. knew that yeah. Pedro has has a stutter and that in no way re re collected on my skills, my knowledge or abilities. Totally agree. Yeah, uh, that's kind of when I was able to sort of let go and and kind of even even like stutter less was as soon as I I kind of like owned it, like even within like my own mind. Like I wasn't trying to like think of a way to like hide it or this or that. And even now, like I feel like looking back, like growing up, there were very, very few uh, friends or people that I uh, spoke to about it. You know, it was something that was very, very like ashamed of. Um, like, like I never brought it up, kind of like hid it, never mentioned it, didn't say a single word. Um, but then as soon as I was able to go, no, like, this is me. This is what I do. Sometimes it just, like, happens. You know, it's really not that big of a deal. And if anyone has an issue with it, well, you know, like, do I really care? Right. And after I got to that point, it's almost like the stuttering kind of, like, almost, like, lessened and lessened and lessened. And it was kind of weird how my confidence almost sort of controlled that uh, stuttering. See, and um, that's what I did. The more 
I focused on just living and not my stutter. It lessened and and lessened. And I mean, it was like, what just happened? You know, because before, yeah. I mean, before I would always, I mean, before turning 40, I was just focused on it. When I was speaking, it's like, oh my God, am I going to stutter on this word or that word? Because I was focusing on it. And after I turned 40, I told myself, I just don't care anymore. If you, yeah. I mean, if you laugh at me because I stutter, that's on you. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, I don't. You're just a, yeah, it's like you're just a jerk, you know, like, like I don't even care about you if you have that type of mindset. I totally understand. Right. And those are the people that I did not want around me. And so I quickly learned who was a positive person around me and then who was a negative person, which I call vampires, because they drain <laughs> you with all of their negativity. And so once I just focused on living and 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 what Amopra talks about, being in the moment, being present, once I started doing that, my blocks lessened more and more. Granted, I still stutter, but what I do now is I pause, I take a breath, and then I go on. And so I don't get angry. I don't get agitated or irritated. or fr I just move on because I'm focusing on life and not on my stutter. And that has been a game ch ch changer for me. Yep. I totally understand. Now, let's to talk about um, everyday life. So how do you handle telephones? Um, well, like I'll definitely have bad days when like I just know like I'm going to have blocks all day long on those days. If I'm getting some type of important call that's not from like a family member, I just don't answer the phone. Um, like I'll still have blocks. That's like one of the things that I'll have blocks on is answering the phone. Um, so like, like in the past as a kid, I did not answer the phone at all. Like, like I wouldn't answer the phone. I wouldn't call anybody on the phone. Like the phone was like, like my worst enemy. Uh, but now it's, you know, it's almost a part of like my daily life with work. Uh, so now it's uh, not something that I'm afraid of, but it definitely gives me some anxiety still. Phones were my nemesis growing up. I mean, I refused to talk on the phone and it didn't change until I was in my 20s where, where you know, yeah. you now have to use the phone, you know, to call and, you know, a motor pizza and whatnot. But yeah, but but during one of my speech therapies, we brainstormed the um, end result was that I purchased an old telephone th through a garage sale or whatnot. Um, and mm -hmm. so I would practice. I would practice dialing and talking on the phone. And then I would pr pr practice <laughs> answering the phone. I would make it ring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I would... Um, practice day after day after day. And so that way later on, when I had to dial or um, answer the phone, I had already done it previously for quite a long time in rehearsal, AKA practicing. And so yeah. when it came down to it, I did it. And that was kind of cool. Nice. And yeah, something like that uh, never worked for me. Like the practicing as soon as I got in the real situation, it just all went out the window. <laughs> yeah, I've been there horrible. too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so how do you handle r restaurants? Because, you know. Yeah, no, that's... I still have issues with those. Um, yeah. When I was younger, I would I would tell my mom, like, hey, like, like I want you to order this for me. You know, like, like I don't want to say anything. Or I would just say, oh, I'll just have what they're going to have. Because that was easier than saying what I wanted, and there were like countless uh, nights when like I didn't get exactly what I wanted, just because it was easier just to order something else. Right. And even oh, now, yeah. sometimes, like I'll like I'll 
like order things that that I may not uh, totally want because I know the things that I do want. Yeah, it's going to be really hard to say, and I might stumble on that. And I'm as you like, just going to skip that tonight. I'm just not trying to deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> I've so been there. Well. Yeah. And and so what what I would do is what you did, but on those rare occasions where I really wanted that chicken fried steak, I would point at the yep, menu. You point, you point <laughs> and show like the you waiter. To places, <laughs> and like you go to the places where like the menus have like numbers because it's easier to say, oh, I just want the number 10. Oh my God, <laughs> yes. I Stuff mean, like that. Yes. Yeah, like I've, I've even gone to like the drive through sometimes and they, I think I'm like messing uh, with them. Like I'll have speech blocks and I'll go to like order and my speech will stop. And they'll think something's wrong with the speaker or something's wrong with me, like something's going on, like I'm messing with them. It's just extremely uh, frustrating. Yes, I have been there too. However, um, yeah. I would use a tape recorder. And so I would um, go home and just practice rehearsing, placing an order. And so I would drive up, roll down the window, hold out the tape recorder, and push play. <laughs> I've done that too, yeah. <laughs> I've done oh that my too. gosh. I can't wait to write a book. I mean, it's all coming out. It's all coming out. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've definitely done that too. It's crazy. Now, do you think that it's important to have a thick skin as a person who stutters? I mean, because, I mean, it's rough. Yeah. Life is rough. Yeah. Uh, that's what's hard was was I didn't really have one until much later on in life, and it was because of the stutter. That was kind of the coincidental part was like I need this to deal with it, but then I don't have it because I am dealing with it. So that was kind of hard. Uh, but yeah, definitely. And there's a lot of criticism and confusion and, and just like ignorance out there that is really, really hard. Uh, like now I'm able to kind of deal with it, but as a kid, it's like it was a nightmare. And, like I just hate like to see or like even think of other kids that are going through what I had to go through uh, growing up. Right. I mean, um, one of my um, previous guests uh, on my on my podcast, he he was telling me that having a th having a thick skin is a prerequisite. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Life is rough. I mean, good lord, Oof. life is rough. Yeah. Now, <laughs> have you? experienced depression because of your stutter and if and if so did you ever seek treatment or reach out yes uh definitely did i'm not sure if it was because of the stuttering or there's just like some uh, family history that kind of led that or uh, probably both but yeah definitely i've gone through periods of like of my life where i like i didn't see basically like how I could ever live uh, with this, like successfully, you know, like, like I couldn't reach my goals because I couldn't even answer the phone growing up. And so how was I going to do like all of these things that I ever dreamed of as long as I had this disability? Uh, so yeah, definitely like, like, shoot, like I totally went through that, uh, seek treatment. Uh, yeah. Like I tried therapy, uh, things like that. But then again, you know, like you're just looking at the therapist and it's like, do they, like even believe the things that they're telling me to do because it's just like like honestly it sounds crazy. Uh, but yeah, like uh, different like antidepressants and stuff. Yeah, um, like I've actually currently been on a low grade antidepressant for the last uh, probably uh, like maybe five or six years. And yeah, I definitely think that uh, that helps too, uh, just with like the like anxiety behind the stuttering and sort of uh, going through like the everyday life. Yeah, that's that definitely helped me. What I tell a lot of people who stutter, who contact me, um, I tell them it is extremely important to just reach out, reach out to anybody. There are lots of wonderful um, organizations and there are m many people like you know family members or friends and i stress that it is so important that you reach out because growing up i mean i kept everything in i kept 
everything yeah. in for for years and years and years. And there were some very dark days that I had that lasted um, into weeks. And so I, um, I wish I had that. But what I had totally. learned is I just had to internalize everything. And that's how I would deal with everything. And that wasn't healthy at all. Yeah, no, like I totally did the same thing. Um, that's what was hard was uh, no one really like understood the people that would try to help. They still didn't really understand. Like uh, my mom tried to help, like kind of like she did almost like everything imaginable to try to help different uh, therapies or like devices or things or like anything, you know, diets or uh, so on. But it was just like, like I still didn't have that person that really understood what I was going through. And so, yeah, like, like I did just have to keep a lot in and even like, even if I did have that person, there's still a lot that's like almost kind of shameful, like to you, like, like as a kid. So you like almost don't want to say things like you don't want to share certain things or certain feelings that you have as, as you like, like about certain things. So that's uh, the other struggle with that. Right. I mean, I, I mean, I've been there cause, oh my gosh, the, the, this year, um, I will turn 50. And, and so I, I think back through all those hard years and I mean, just thank goodness that I just, I survived. I mean, yeah, cause, I mean, I feel it's, way, yeah. cause you know, it's just rough. It's just rough. Now, let me ask you this question. You're of l legal drinking age, correct? Yes. Okay. So have you ever drank alcohol and it made your st st stutter better? Like, <laughs> like it was gone. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Um, totally. Yeah. I even remember like being younger and kind of like asking my mom, like, "Hey, if I just have a like like a few drinks, like I can talk much easier. Maybe I just need to drink <laughs> all the time." <laughs> And so my mom's answer to that was, no, you know, that's not a solution. That's not a good idea. <laughs> but then um, on the flip side, the more that I understood, like the more that I drank, then the stutter would actually get even worse. So there was kind of like like a balance, and it uh, wasn't always helped by like alcohol. Okay. It then just kind of came down to what was like in my mind at the time. And sometimes the alcohol gave me less. Uh, self-awareness where I wasn't, I guess, like worried about myself, like how I was speaking or acting and whatnot. So I was able to stutter less, but then sometimes I would notice like the alcohol, like, like if I was out drinking, it would make me kind of like sloppy or slow. And then I was more self-aware. So then the stuttering would actually go up. So it was kind of like a, like a fine balance. And I quickly realized that's not the answer and that's not going to help either. See, and you are a thousand percent correct because you have to find that sweet spot. And for me, yeah. <laughs> if I had three rum and cokes, now only yeah. three, I mean, yep. my sp speech was fantastic. I mean, I mean, hand me a presentation; I will do it right then and there. I mean, it was yeah. it was just <laughs> amazing that yeah. three rum and cokes just handled my speech perfectly and people will tell me like you um why don't you drink all day uh no <laughs> <laughs> yeah but like as i was younger that's what i thought like like i just imagined this life like hey like maybe i can just get through this life and do like everything that like i want to do like if i just can drink all day long right no <laughs> that isn't a viable option right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a horrible idea, but it's like <laughs> it is. It like is at that time. Like I would have done anything to take that away. Oh God, yes. Yeah. I mean, because you just want to be rid of it. You know, yeah. that's why um, I tried voodoo, and that didn't work. And so I was out. <laughs> you know, a lot of money, but you know, that's a whole other show. So anyway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so yeah, no, let like, me... if there was a magic. <laughs> A drug or like a magic spell or something. Oh, I would be the yeah, first like, one. I'd be yeah. the first one. Okay, now yeah. here, here is a very important question that a lot of people want to know because um, it's one of our our hot topics. But what is 
the most effective technique that you do to help you with your fluency? Um, that's what's hard is I don't necessarily have any conscious, I guess, thoughts or tools that that I use. It really just comes down to uh, my confidence level. Um, because I kind of avoided like the therapy stuff when I was younger, because I just like I just did not see that that was going to work. So after one or two sessions, I would kind of leave. Like I never really got those uh, types of like tools and tricks. Uh, really, for me, it just comes down to my confidence level, um, and that could be due to like an anxious moment, like an anxious week, like when I'm uh, really really stressed out, you know, starting a new job or like like about to make a move or something's going on in like the family, uh, my stuttering goes through the roof. But if everything's kind of calm in my life, like everything's going well, like I have all of that to sort of uh, fall back on like or support me, uh, then I'm uh, speaking much better. So really it's just about trying to keep my stress level uh, down and my confidence level like up. See, you bring up a fantastic point. Because I've been reading all these books on having a positive mindset and building up your confidence. Because what I have found out, like you, is when I have a high level of confidence and go in with with a positive mindset, I'm actually unstoppable. I mean, I go in there. I mean, I do my thing. My speech is fantastic. <laughs> and then when I'm all done, I go, wow, I did that. I did that. Yeah, I stepped like, out of my comfort zone and I you did, did it. it. And that's like the best high. It's like the biggest high. Like you feel like like invincible after you get through something like that. <laughs> and it is so important because I learned this in my 40s with, with having to work on myself. I spent two years in personal development where I read all those books by Tony Robbins and Mel Robbins and Les Brown and John Maxwell, learning all about who Pedro is, learn, learning about how really st- strong I am. Yeah, Be- yeah. Because I never knew that. I never knew that I had a power within me that once I tapped into it, oh my gosh. I mean, once that came out, my confidence shot all the way up. And I mean, I was like, well, I can do anything now. I can do anything. Yeah. It's crazy because like the stuttering sort of like hides that uh, strength and sort of takes that strength away to where you think you really can't do anything because of this. And really, it's just, I didn't really know, just like throughout uh, life, like you're like always kind of battling that thought of, I'm never going to do this. Like, I'm never going to be able to do this. And I feel like it's almost just like one day you just get like so pissed off. You're just like, no, I'm done with this crap. <laughs> you know, this oh is my not going to happen yes. anymore. And I'm going to shoot this, like own this. And I'm going to make it work. And as soon as you, if you like get to that point, things just, as you like almost start to fall into place, like you still like have struggles, you still have like issues, right? But it's like as soon as you get that like little click in your brain, it all kind of falls away, and it's crazy how quickly uh, that can happen. But like really, that's all it kind of took. Once you tap into it, I mean, it's it's like a whole other world has just opened up to you, and it's like wow, I never knew that I could do this. Yeah, yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's pretty wild. So let me um, ask you this. Do you ever go through f- fluency phases, like one week you're okay, and then the next two weeks it's really horrible, and then the next month is fantastic? Do you <laughs> go through those fluency yeah. phases? Yes. Like when I was younger, um, like I would have like entire years where I was outgoing and I would speak in front of the class and like. Like I would volunteer to speak in front of the class. It was like my favorite thing to do. And then the next year it was like the total opposite. 
And it was almost like it kind of flip-flopped like that for, I don't know, four or five years. Like every other year, it was one or the other. And that was uh, sort of when my speech, like when it was bad, I would like uh, bounce on words, you know, like the ba 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 buzz, uh, things like that, like syllables and letters. And then eventually when that all kind of went away, it, it turned into the uh, blocks where I I feel like I would go to speak, like either start a sentence or mid-sentence, I would hit a word that was difficult for me. And I would just kind of stop and I wasn't able to get that out. And now when I have uh, good days or bad days or good weeks or bad weeks, it's like I have bad weeks, kind of like I mentioned before, anytime I'm stressed and no matter like who I'm talking to, like my mother and my father and my sister, uh, strangers, it's just bad. And then I'll have other days like or weeks when I can talk to like almost anybody. And I'll still have those little I shoot like the slip ups, um, but it's uh, nothing that's like really stopping me or something that I'm thinking of. But yeah, like I definitely still have uh, bad times that I deal with. See, and that is the crazy part because you just don't know when it'll yeah. happen. Yeah. You have just, no like, clue. You wake up one day. Oh, and, and there it is. Feel it. You're like, you're <laughs> like, oh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a bad day. Like that just happened. Like. Yeah. That's when you wake up and do your positive um, affirmations. This is going to be an awesome day. I don't care what anyone tells me. This is going to be an awesome day, and let's just rock and roll. Yep. Yes. And most of the time that works. Some days it's just like, nope. <laughs> I it. Today, today is Not today, bad. Pedro. Like, <laughs> like, like, I, like I have that feeling in my gut. Like it's going to be a bad day today. Here is another hot topic. Now, we – we kind of sort of touch on it, but let me ask you this out directly. So yeah. do you let others finish your sentences? I wish they would more often. Um, like if I am stuck on a word and I'm sitting there struggling and like my eyes are closed and I'm trying to get it out. It's like, like if you know it, just go ahead and say it. So I don't have to do this anymore. Uh, but uh, most of the time I think people don't and they don't, uh, I shoot like want to finish your sentences because they think that might almost like hinder you or sort of um, maybe like undercut your uh, confidence like if they are uh, doing that. Uh, but no, I, I totally welcome that. Like, like if you know the word I'm trying to say, go ahead and say it for me and I'll, like, I'll thank you later. <laughs> like what I tell people, help you, help me, help you, help me, help you. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Okay, so so here is another hot topic. I mean, and when I ask people around the world, people who stutter, when, when I ask them this question, the answers are split right down the middle. So let me ask you, Will. So when you are alone, uh, can you speak without stuttering? 99.9% .9 of the time, yes. Wow. See, and... I mean, I am the opposite, you know, when I'm all by myself and, you know, when, when I'm talking to myself, like what we all do, mm -hmm. um, you know, I still st st stutter. And, w and when I'm talking to my dog, I still stutter. And when I'm in the sh sh shower going over my day, um, you know, as we all do, um, I still, <laughs> yeah. I still stutter. It's, I mean, it's just weird. No, I'm actually there too. Uh, sometimes when I'm talking with my dog, like, like I will stutter. Uh, sometimes it's not even about like talking to someone that, that would make you nervous. Like sometimes I'm, I'm talking with like my niece or like my nephews and I'll stutter. Uh, sometimes it's like my dog, like I said, but if I'm just like by myself, like reading through a sentence or like a book or practicing saying something, I can say it totally fine. But if there's another, like, being involved, for some reason, that's what will uh, set me off. I have no idea what that means. I wish I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're all different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're all different. Now, has this ever happened to you? Let's say you have a doctor's appointment, and then you walk in, and there's a, a front desk admin person and they greet you good morning and they ask you your name and then you have a block 
and it's a, you know, it's a long block. Um, have they ever asked you if you had forgotten your name? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, did you forget your name? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh, do you want to be slapped? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they asked me that. Uh, that's what's kind of weird is like saying your name is one of like the hard things to do. Um, <laughs> like, like I find difficulty with saying my name or actually like repeating myself. Like I could say something, I could be talking for five minutes and have no issues. And then someone could say, Oh, like, could you say that like last thing one more time? Total block. I can't do it. Well, yeah. And I have no idea what that means either. Uh, but yeah, like saying your name all the time, <laughs> all, the, all the time. And yeah, yeah. Like, like I've definitely gotten the, like, Oh, like, did you forget your name comment uh, more than once? For sure. He um, if I had a quarter for every time that happened, I'd be driving like 12 Teslas. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's a thing. Now in um, talking about your career path, d d did you ever think about if your stutter might hold you back? Oh yeah. All the time. Um, shoot. Uh, basically like my entire life has been, finding jobs or school situations or, or even like everyday uh, situations that, that I'm able to navigate uh, through with my stuttering. Um, like, like I would have never guessed that I would be doing what I'm doing now. Like, like as a kid, uh, just like, I'm happy where I am now. I'm like, I'm involved with actually like medical sales and stuff. So I'm like on the phone or doing uh, like certain types of conversations and stuff uh, pretty often, but it's, it's pretty uh, low stress. There's no like cold calling uh, or like presentations or things like that. It's just kind of like a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, like you sort of build the relationship as you go. And most of like the one-on-one, -on -one, like in-person stuff is kind of, kind of like the end of it um, in terms of like closing the deal or doing part of like the clinical training that I have to do. Um, but to say that I would be able to be doing this like five, six years ago, like I would have told you that you were crazy. But um, like, like I worked the last uh, five or six years uh, performing like ultrasound examinations and basically having to speak to different people, like in terms of like my patients, uh, going out to like the waiting room is like the call names. That was always a difficult one. And just like you said, like by the time you get home, you're just a dead, like totally drained because you had to sort of turn yourself on all day long. And just like the stress of doing that and like talking to those people and making sure like you weren't stuttering and doing this, this and that, like by the time you get home, like you're just dead. But at the same time, uh, that practice, like, like of having to talk to those people, like all the time and sort of like, I'd say getting the reassurance of, oh, I, like I can do this, I'm doing this like every day. And yes, I do have a little slip ups here and there. And yes, they are kind of embarrassing, but I still get through it. And majority of the time I'm actually like, okay, that sort of builds the confidence, like at the same time. See, let's talk about the F word, fear, 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 <laughs> F -E -A -R, <laughs> fear. <laughs> the other F word. Yeah. Fear. Um, growing up, um, I would watch these lawyer TV shows. And so, I mean, I was, oh, I yeah. was, I was fascinated by, you know, courtroom drama and, you know, I object and moved a strike. I mean, I loved all that. And so I had it in my head that um, I wanted to be a lawyer. That's yeah. what I wanted to be. I, I have but, that as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I told nobody. I didn't tell yep. anybody because I didn't want them to tell me that, you know, that it's a, a bad idea, you know, you're crazy, da, da, da. And so I had it in my head that um, I would build up to it. And so um, in college, my major was, was pre-law. And so I thought, I can do this. I can do this. And then one weekend, I went to the movies. And so I don't know if you've ever watched this movie my cousin Vinny there is a courtroom scene and one of the attorneys I mean he looks professional I mean he 
by looking at him, it's like, oh, he he has it all. And so mm -hmm. when he has to give the I'm opening um, argument, he gets up, he buttons his jacket, and then he walks over to the jury box, and then it happens. And he has the most severe stutter, and nothing oh. is nothing is coming out, and he's pounding on the wood in the jury box to help him get it out. And the people in the jury box, they are looking at him just completely mortified. Their eyes are open. Their mouth is open. And then it comes to a point where he's spitting on the jury as he's trying to get the <laughs> word out. And they're covering their faces. <laughs> oh, and, gosh. And that's when it hit me. I said, that is not going to be Pedro. I mean, right then and there. Yeah, that's horrible. I, I made up my mind, and that Monday morning, I went into the counselor's office and changed from pre-law to psychology. I thought, I can help people, but in a different way. But, you know, that's the power of fear. It is yeah. unbelievable how much power we give to that word. Yeah, no, I'm actually surprised that uh, that movie is one of the very few that I have not seen. Uh, but, yeah, now I'm kind of <laughs> glad that I never did because that might have – Turned it a very fast <laughs> in my head when I was younger. Uh, yeah, that's no, a rough like, movie. <laughs> yeah, like I shoot with like the role that like like entertainment or like Hollywood plays with how they for a trade like certain people in like music or like, uh, film people that like do stuff or it's very very negative or it's even like like a joke. There's like this stigma. It's like you're stuttering, like you're lying about something or this this and that. And so it's right. almost like like the fear. I feel oh, like it's being created, but then like the ignorance is also being created like for everybody else. And it just kind of I shoot like um uh, like almost kind of builds on each other, it just makes it so much worse. Right. Mm hmm Exactly. And yeah, I mean those what like a couple minutes had a profound impact on my life and made me change my major in school. I mean, that's just it's just yeah. crazy the power that w w we give to fear. It's just unreal. And like, how often do you think about at the moment, like when you saw that scene too? Oh my gosh. Like quite often, quite yeah. often. Yep. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, so let's, <laughs> let's switch gears and, and, uh, and here is another hot topic. All right. So, you know, dating is hard for everybody in the world. But if you stutter, it's like a thousand times more difficult. <laughs> How did you handle dating with having a stutter? Um, there was a lot of avoidance kind of, but um, like I wouldn't say it necessarily stopped me, but it probably made for like some awkward moments that could have not been to my benefit. Uh, most of the time when I brought it into like, like open conversation, it's it's like pretty accepted. It's not a big deal. I've gotten, oh, that's kind of cute. Like, I like that. And you're like, yeah, you're crazy. Whatever you want to say, you know. <laughs> um, but it's like, like, I never heard anything bad about it. But then at the same time, you know, like, why would anybody say anything bad? But I don't think it's like anyone said, like anything about it, like about it. But through my own fear or my like own, I guess, avoidance of certain situations, that's probably hindered, um, I guess, like opportunities that I have had uh, with dating in the past, I'm sure. Once you, you are on a date, I mean, it's, it's hard enough to get a date. And once you're on that date, it's like, okay, now I, I have to focus everything on not stuttering. And then guess what happens? Yeah, that's all you can do. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you do. Yeah, that's that's all you do. I mean, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's you know we we have such interesting lives. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah, I think after you can get uh, through the first uh, couple of dates, like I'm fine. Typically, right. like when I meet uh, new people, I'm either perfect, like I can talk about anything, and it's like this is crazy, like I'm not stuttering at all, like or it's the total opposite. And it that typically has nothing to do with them. It's just like kind of like a luck of the draw thing. Oh, uh, this time I'm going to be like this, and this time I'm, I'm going to be like that. So I typically will 
like avoid the the sit down dinner first dates, you know, where you're just kind of staring at each other and like you're forced to just basically speak the entire time. Right. Because that can be kind of awkward, like as it is. Uh, so I, I typically found that like the more like like interactive types of uh, first dates and things like that, where there's like like a lot going on in the like environment that you can sort of play off of makes it a hundred percent easier. That I agree with. Yes. Yes. Now, what do you think about all of this new t technology? You have Google home, you have uh, Alexa, and then you have Siri. Do you think all of this, this technology is helpful or, or hurtful for people who stutter? Uh, like, I definitely wish we had more of this, like, online, like, ordering and stuff when I was a kid. Uh, like, I still remember when, actually, like, I want to say it was Pizza Hut. Uh, first, I like, started, like, online pizza, like, orders. Like, you didn't actually have to call them and place your order. I was, like, like over the moon about that. Like, oh, my God, I can just, <laughs> actually, like, get online and just, like, order my pizza. This is the best thing ever. Like, like I love Pizza Hut. Yeah, um, for me, growing up, I always had other people call for me. And so, you know, yeah. to pay them, yeah, you too. know, um, I would have them um, order a pizza for them mm -hmm. with mine as, like, payment to <laughs> yeah, like, helping me out. I should, like, I would do that, too. Like, even at uh, bars and stuff, like, when I was younger, I'd be like, hey, like, like, I'll buy your drink if you just go get one for me. Just because I didn't right. want to go, like, order it for myself. Yes. But yeah, that it, was definitely a... <laughs> Let's a make a deal. Burden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like, hey, like, I'll just buy you a drink if you just want to go get me one. And I'm like, okay, sure. And I'm like, oh my God, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> right. And so, yeah. you know, nowadays for me, I love how, how um, I can just hop on an app and uh, motor dinner and prepay and put the tip on there. And so when they, yeah. when they come to my home, I just open the door and smile and that's it. It's all good. It's all good. And and then also many of my other podcast guests, when they were I'm answering this question, many of them would tell me that they use it as a means to practice because it's it's not a human. You know, it's a robot. Ah, OK. So, yeah, that it's interesting. I, I, I never thought about that. But, yeah, I could see that. I. Like, I definitely know, like, having, like, the internet, like, as I was younger, like, like as I was growing up, that gave me, like, an outlet to uh, speak to people more often than, like, I would have. I was one of those, like, like, always online, you know, like, like, the AOL, like, instant messenger stuff, like, talking to my friends. It's, like, like, my favorite thing to do because that was, like, a method that I could uh, speak to people and not have to worry about my stutter. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so, so speech wise, what is a challenge that you had to overcome and how did you do it? Um, like the, an individual experience or a um, life experience? Because for me, the uh, telephone, it was always extremely d difficult. And so, like I had stated previously, um, I bought an old phone and 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 then I would ah, practice okay. for months practicing. Mm -hmm. That way, when I had to do it in the real world, um, ah, okay, I could okay. actually do it. I've got one. Yeah, uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier, like when I would have to go to, like out to like the waiting rooms, like to call for a patient, uh, just like saying, I do like my own uh, name to certain people it's almost as difficult like to call out somebody else's name. And so one of the methods that like I would use was like, if I'm going out to find a uh, John Jones, I would say, okay, uh, shoot. Like I would say Mr. Jones or uh, miss uh, this. And for some reason, if I said Mr. Or miss in front of the name, it made it uh, much easier to do. And that was the only way that I was able to like overcome that challenge. I don't know you like what that does for me or like what that did, but that enabled me to get that uh, speech block. Uh, yeah. Um, those are called, I believe 
bumper words or like f- f- filler words because yeah. I I had a lot of those. <laughs> I mean, because I had a lot of bumper and filler. <laughs> I do a lot of that because you know, G's. Well, the okay, the whole alphabet is hard for me, but GM, you know, good morning. I always have a hard time with that. Ah. And so um, I put in a bumper word. Hey, good morning. Hi, good morning. And I mean, it oh. always, it always worked out a hundred percent. And so, I mean, you know, I do that now. Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. And I mean, it works out like every single time. As you like H words. Um, It's like heavy breathing. <sighs> And so yeah. I have to practice. <laughs> no, like that's my thing. That was like H words. I always have issues with those. Um, like I'd say, luckily my uh, vocabulary is pretty blessed, and so I'll kind of like hit my uh, mental thesaurus. Like if I know that word's about to come up in my sentence, and then kind of switch it. Oh my god, I do the same thing. It's wow. like oh, like as you like, I'm ten words ahead of what I'm going to say. Oh my God! Yes, and yes. I know I'm going to say it. So, like, I had to think of this word before I get there. Boom! I did it. Perfect. See, and it's, and it's crazy how like, as you like, most people like, I don't think that they can almost uh, forecast what they're going to say. It's like it just kind of comes out as it goes. But like for right. me, it's like, see, you, like it's almost like a game of chess where like you know you, I feel like <laughs> your move like, it's so weird. See, and I do the exact. Same thing, and doing it all day long that adds to being completely exhausting. Exactly at the end of the day, oh my gosh! I think we're twins, Will. I think we're twins. I'm the older twin. I'm the older one. So just (laughs) FYI. So, uh... (laughs) all right. I totally understand. Like, (laughs) she like all the time too. Like my friends would like invite me out places. I'm just like, like I just don't have the energy to go do anything right now. Like, right. I am drained like i am dead like another social situation right now it's just there's just no can't. way i want to go do that yeah like i can't like, like all of my energy for that is spent <laughs> i just need to be alone right now yeah i totally exactly. understand you. so here's a deep question so what has stuttering taught you um it's taught me a lot i know stutters uh seem to be pretty like observational. It's amazing what you can learn as a kid when like you're just like kind of keeping your mouth shut and just like listening and kind of observing everything. Um, it definitely gives you like a really strong like empathy towards others like like in need or if they have any type of like disability. Um, like I definitely would like to have like or develop some type of uh, voice in like the stuttering community. Just like this is just like like I can't believe that something this big is still so uh, misunderstood, and it's like not even like really known and and just like negatively stigmatized. I think it's time that like almost like all of us kind of come together and just shine like a light on this, so people can start like finally understanding what this is because it's really like like it as you like like it's extremely complicated, but it's also very very simple. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. And so what? advice would you give to another person who stutters i'd say find a friend who does um that or get like like a really thick skin or find a friend that doesn't mind you know speaking up for you like when you're having a bad day uh things like that i like i'd say the like advice would kind of change on like the age group um but yeah there's as you like just like how you and I said earlier, it's like we could write a book about this stuff at this point. Exactly. Now, here is your um, opportunity. So if sure. you had the chance to be on the world st- stage, to give the world um, insight as to what st- st- stuttering is, what message would you convey to the world? Uh, well, my first thought is when you said stage, I would run. Um, but, <laughs> come back, <laughs> but, come but, back. <laughs> I know, right? but if I had to say something, I would just say that um, she like that's what's hard is trying to just say like one thing. Like I think a lot of education and a lot of knowledge and like like a lot of mentorship towards like the youth that 
like are dealing with this uh, needs to take place. Um, like I can only like like imagine how like I may have benefited. As you like when I was younger, if I had someone that was older to uh, speak to that, as you like went through the same things that I did, I think that would have been like amazing and made a world of difference. So I really hope that I could in some type of capacity uh, be that for myself or like organize some group to deal with some type of like mentorship to the, as you like the kids that are still dealing with us. That would be a positive message. Mine would be to, you know, just have patience and just listen. I mean, that's huge to let us know that we have value in what we are trying to tell you and that all that we want is to have you listen and be patient and be courteous and just give us that respect. It will probably surprise you too. I don't think I've ever met a, like, like a person who stuttered that wasn't uh, remarkably intelligent at the same time. See, and you bring up a uh, good point because people who stutter, we are very creative. We are very resourceful because we have to be. It's called survival. We are like the MacGyvers of the world because yeah, it's so true. It's so I mean, true. I can have, figure anything out. <laughs> right. So we, I mean, we have to work like 10 times harder and think outside of the box to accomplish what many others do quite easily. And so, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. crazy to think about, but yeah, you're totally right. You're totally right. I mean, we have to be, because we have to survive in this world. And so we just have to be a little bit more creative in how we do things. So, yeah, like right now, I'm just imagining a team like on the, a show survivor, like a team of stutterers versus <laughs> like like any other team you could bring forth. Like we would dominate. Any other team you, yeah, <laughs> like any other team you could bring forth and just watch them just like. <laughs> oh my god! Like totally humiliated. <laughs> That's the we first would. thing that like came to mind when you said that. I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you're you're not lying about that at all. I totally <laughs> see that. We would so dominate that show. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Let's do it. Let's do it. Well, Will, um, I want to thank you for spending your um, evening with me. I think you are just hashtag awesome. I think you are. Yeah, you too, man. Thank you so much. This you are awesome speaking with you. You are just courageous. And so, you know, I want to say just thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I have a global audience, and they are phenomenal. Um, my Listeners are just amazing. What if they wanted to reach out to you? How would they do that? I uh, like, like I'm on Instagram. That's probably the one uh, social media outlet that I I'm pretty active on. Uh, I'm at uh, William Edmund, W I L L I A M E D M U N D. I've been wanting to sort of uh, like connect with different as you like other types of people and just didn't really necessarily know how and still I'm kind of I'm like battling some type of uh I guess like hidden like identity like as a stutterer because most people as you like still don't like even though that I do like sometimes I'll tell people and they're like like no you don't and I'm like yeah I'm like like I've dealt with this my entire life and they're like I've never noticed and they're like well I'm like I'm either really really good at this or you're just not very smart <laughs> But that's actually like uh, back to what I was saying was like I would love to get in touch with different types of people about this. Okay, um, we will have those links in the um podcast sh sh show notes. That way, um, anyone from around the globe can just go click on it and find you. And so, I just want to say just one more time, um, th thank you, Will. Um, I've had a wonderful. Conversation yeah, thank you, Pedro. with you. I mean, it has. I mean, this whole hour and twenty seven minutes. I mean, it just passed by because I mean, we were just having just a great conversation, and so I'm hoping this won't be our last. So down the road. Oh yeah, definitely. 
definitely. I'd love to speak with you again. This was that's so much fun. I definitely appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And so once this is published, you'll be getting a lot of DMs in your Instagram. So just get ready because you will will now be going global. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. I would definitely appreciate any type of communication I could get with the uh, community. That would be great. That or well, anyone sir, that I could partner up with like to help and give back as well. That would be awesome. That would be phenomenal. Well, sir, thank you very much. And, and you be well and take care. Okay. Thank you, Pedro. You too. Thank you, sir. If you like this podcast, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Subscribe, rate, and review. Thank you for listening, and we will talk again.